The man was scared into running away because his girlfriend had turned into a zombie. In the morning, Nick woke up at church and realized that his girlfriend Gloria wasn't with him. When he went downstairs to look for her, he found blood on the piano and got a bad feeling. In that distance, a pair of legs were exposed in the doorway of a room. As Nick approached, he saw that his friend was not breathing, and his neck looked as if it had been torn by some wild animal. Nick was in a cold sweat and didn't know what to do, thinking that his girlfriend was missing. He picked up a stick for protection and called out Gloria's name. Soon, he found Gloria crouching on the ground in a corner. He rushed forward and called Gloria to go with him. But she was eating his best friend. Then Gloria stared at Nick with such ferocity. And to make things even weirder, she had a dagger in her chest. Nick felt a chill run down his spine and just wanted to get out of the place. So he went through the window and out into the street. But before he could catch his breath, a car crashed into him 10 meters away. When he woke up again, he was in the hospital. He was afraid to tell the police the truth because he was afraid that the deaths would be linked to him. His mother, his sister Alicia and his stepfather Travis arrived at the hospital. At night, while Travis was at the hospital with him, Nick woke up from a nightmare. When questioned by Travis, he told him what he'd seen at the church. Travis went to the church to verify the truth. Due to the doors to the church were locked at the moment, so he had to climb in through the bathroom window. It's awfully quiet. Travis searched room by room and found nothing. And then he came to a room. A man pounced on him and kept yelling don't kill me before running away. Travis chased him up the stairs and saw the blood on the piano. He came down the hall and yelled for someone. But then he tripped over something while looking for it. He felt a puddle of blood directly on his hand with remnants of tissue and flesh. Travis was gasping for breath, clearly in shock. The next day, he told his wife that something terrible had happened at the church. Madison says it's normal because it's a place for hoodlums to get high. She said Travis was high on drugs and was hallucinating. Travis had no proof and said nothing more. At that moment, the patient in the next bed was barely breathing. So the doctors quickly took him away. Nick took advantage of the chaos, stole a suit, put it on, and ran out into the street. He went to a diner and found Kelvin, the guy who sold him the drugs. He just wanted to find out what he had been smoking and why his girlfriend was like that. Kelvin consoled him, then took Nick for a drive. Then he drove him to the moat under the overpass. Then he told Nick to stay in the car. It was safe. He went to the back of the car to look for something. Soon Kelvin reached the door and told Nick to get out of the car. Just as he opens the door, Nick sees Kelvin's gun hidden behind his ass, so he pretended not to see it, then suddenly got out of the car and wrapped Kelvin's hand with the gun. In order to survive, Nick exploded with unprecedented energy. Finally, with the sound of a gunshot, Kelvin slowly fell to the ground. A horrific bite video has gone viral. We've seen these thugs. They can't be killed no matter how much the police shoot at them. In fact, this is the first time the zombie virus has spread in the United States and caused an infection. But people who watched the video thought it was a prank and didn't give it a second thought. On the other hand, Nick accidentally killed Calvin, a drug dealer. He was so scared that he called his parents for help. When the three of them arrived at the river, Calvin, who was supposed to be dead, was nowhere to be found. Nick had an emotional breakdown and wondered if he was really hallucinating. Just as they are about to back up and leave that area, Kelvin appears again in the hole in the bridge. Travis and Madison immediately got out of the car to inquire about Kelvin's condition. But before they could say anything, Kelvin went crazy and bit them. Luckily, they were able to avoid being bitten in time. At the critical moment, Nick reversed the car and knocked Kelvin to the ground. But Kelvin stood up again without a scratch, knowing that Kelvin is not a normal person. Nick pressed the gas pedal hard and knocked Kelvin out of the car by tens of meters. Now it's impossible for him to still be breathing. Right. The three of them stared at Kelvin's body from a distance. However, Kelvin was writhing again after a few seconds. Travis didn't know what was going on, but after thinking about the strange phenomena in the past few days, he guessed that some kind of terrible virus was spreading. They rushed to contact their families to get out of Los Angeles. When Madison caught her daughter Alicia, Alicia says she's with her boyfriend and can't leave because he's got a fever of 50 degrees. The two of them told Alicia to stay away from him and said they'd be right there. By the time the three of them found Alicia, Matt was lying on the bed in a very weak state. Travis pulled back his collar and there was a human bite wound. Matt, perhaps realizing what was happening, asked Alicia to leave. And so the four of them make their way back to the house. And Mrs. Cruz was still very much at home hosting her party. The smart ones were already stocking up on supplies. Peter's got the right idea. Then Travis washed the blood off the car and went to pick up his ex-wife and his son. He said, if I'm not back on time, you guys head for the desert and I'll catch up with you soon. Soon the plane flew over the city, and as the plaza filled with people, traffic came to a standstill. Travis was stuck in traffic. Luckily, he knew a shortcut to get there. He even saw a policeman stocking up on supplies. Obviously the cops knew something. 
as the riots in the streets grew. The police chose to shoot down that infected people. However, the police were met with increasing resistance from citizens who wanted democracy and freedom. Little did they know that disaster was on the way. America is definitely the most democratic and free country in the world. Even though the zombie virus is spreading quietly in America, the people think that wearing masks and quarantines are bullshit because the people need freedom. Now, because the police shot a homeless man who was infected with the virus. People are protesting in the streets. Travis' son Chris is part of the protest at a young age, but he doesn't understand the danger of the large crowds that are now gathering. Luckily, Travis found him before tragedy struck. At that moment, a woman wandered towards the crowd. The police couldn't stop her, so they had to shoot her. This led to a massive revolt by the people. They burned and looted to gain their democratic freedoms. To protect his ex-wife and son, Travis asked the barbershop owner to let them go inside. The barbershop owner's wife agreed and they went into hiding. At night, the men outside became more frantic, attacking and smashing the doors of the neighboring stores. It was then that Chris noticed something unusual the walls were getting hot. This must be because the house next door was set on fire. They discussed their situation and prepared to move out. But as soon as they opened the door, a couple of guys from outside came in. Luckily they didn't do anything to hurt anyone. They took the opportunity to move outside. Now we can see that the world outside has become even more chaotic. Some people have turned into zombies and started to bite others. Chris has a strong sense of justice and tries to help those who are being bitten. But Travis pulls him away. People are losing their minds and going crazy. The two families keep moving through the chaos. As they pass a shelf, it collapses and crushes the barbershop owner's wife's leg. They were able to save her by moving the shelves. Then they were able to get into Travis' car and leave. On the way, they witnessed the military shooting people who had turned into zombies. The city's power system is rapidly going down. On the other hand, Nick and the others were waiting for Travis at home when a door slammed. The three of them were afraid to make a move. Nick bravely opened the curtain and saw a dog lying on the doorstep. There was blood on the dog, so Nick examined it and realized it wasn't its. The dog then ran towards the house and barked at the window. Nick wondered what was going on, so he opened the blinds and looked out the window. His neighbor, who had a bloody mouth, was looking at him and walking towards where the dog was barking. Nick suggested going over the wall to the neighbor's house to look for a shotgun. With Nick leading the way, the three of them made it to the neighbor's house and found the shotgun just as they had hoped. Alicia saw through the window that the walker had entered the house. Then the dog started barking. And then Travis came home in his car. Travis opened the door and entered the house just in time to see the zombie chewing on the dog. But the zombie got up when he heard the commotion. Travis tried to wake up his neighbor, but he was quickly tackled to the ground. Madison also heard his cries and took Nick's shotgun. When Madison arrived with a gun and was about to shoot the walker, kind-hearted Travis immediately stopped Madison as he tried to convert the zombie with love. Good thing Daniel was so ruthless. One shot ended the walker's life, and Daniel had a firm idea in his mind that he could never be with his family, because sooner or later, their kindness and compassion would get him killed.